Now let me tell you what really happens in a patient with hyperthyroidism. Okay, let's suppose I have the hyperthyroidism. If I have a hyperthyroidism, I have a thyrotoxic state. It means my circulating level of TCT4 and tissue activity, uh, you can say TCT4 activity on the tissues is very high. I may have due to Graves' disease, I may have this problem due to <coughs> toxic nodular goiter, or I may have this problem due to some you can say toxic multinodal goiter or toxic adenoma or I may have this problem unfortunately if due to any reason I am taking thyroxine in inappropriately in high concentration. So all these conditions may lead to thyrotoxic state right. Okay let us take a classical case a patient come to you and uh, patient is having Graves disease. Now what will happen number one from head to toe will work up. When T3, T4 levels are very high, proteins catabolism start because basal metabolic rate is very high. Body need more fuel, right? It has to burn more calories, right? To maintain high T3, T4 dependent basal metabolic rate. So, of course, all the proteins are undergoing catabolism and when there is hypercatabolic state, your hair become thin. So, don't look at my hair, they are lost. But actually, uh, if a patient is hyperthyroid, uh, the patient's hair become thin, right? Number one in hy hyperthyroidism. But let's compare it with the hypothyroidism also. Okay, right? Let's compare it with the hypothyroidism also. In hyperthyroidism, hair are lost or hair become thin. In hypothyroidism, hair become thick and unmanageable, right? Then another thing, which is very important in hyperthyroidism, uh, because Activity in central nervous system is more, right? In central nervous system, adrenergic receptors are more, and central nervous system activity is more. So patient looks anxious. Patient looks have a worried look, right? But when you compare hyperthyroid patient with hypothyroid patient, hypothyroid patient central nervous system is slow, so patient looks depressed. So again, anxiety is. Uh, seen in a patient with hyperthyroidism and depression is seen in a patient with hypothyroidism. Is that right? Then we come to the next thing that insomnia, person whose central, central activity is very high, central nervous system activity, person cannot easily sleep. So, this is very uh, a big problem to have a proper sleep. So, these patients who are hy hyperthyroid, they have insomnia. Opposite to that, People who have hypothyroidism, they don't have insomnia, rather they oversleep, right? We call that condition somnolence, right? Again, let's compare. There, here is a hyperthyroid patient and here is a hypothyroid patient. In hyperthyroid patient, hair become thin. In hypothyroid patient, hair become less and thick and unmanageable. In hyperthyroidism, patient looks anxious. In hypothyroidism, patient looks depressed in hyperthyroidism patient has insomnia difficulty to have sleep in hypothyroidism patient sleeps all the time as much you allow him to sleep right then in hyperthyroidism patient talks more i don't mean that he gives lecture like me more but in hyperthyroidism person is more talkative right in hypothyroidism person is having slow you can say psychomotor activity even in hyperthyroidism, tendon reflexes are more. In hypothyroidism, tendon reflexes are slow, right? In hyper, especially tendon reflexes relax slowly. Then in hyperthyroidism, there are tremors. And these tremors are fine tremors in hyperthyroidism, right? Not coarse tremors like cerebral disease or coarse tremor which are seen in uh, Parkinsonism. In hyperthyroidism, a thyrotoxic state, there are fine tremors. Then you come down. Let's look at the eyes. Now, patient with hyperthyroidism will keep on comparing hyper with hypo. Patient with hyperthyroidism, where thyroid hormones are more, right? If hyperthyroidism is specially due to Graves' disease, then eyes may be protruding unduly forward and there may be exophthalmos. Another important thing which I would like to tell you about the hyperthyroidism is in hyperthyroidism, adrenergic receptors are more in levator palpebris superioris and levator palpebris superioris muscle is working more and it is having undue pull 
to the upper lid so when patient eyeballs turn downward upper lid fail to follow right we call this situation lid lag again for example patient is if you put your finger in front of the patient like this and you take your finger gradually down normally when patient eyeball will turn down right if patient keeps focused on your finger I, uh, as eyeballs are turning down upper lid also follows the eyeball but in these patients because the levator palpebris superioris is overactive right so eyeballs do turn down but up, uh, upper eyelid fail to follow that so we call this condition lid lag now let's come down let's talk about the skin skin in case of hyperthyroidism is warm in hyperthyroidism skin is warm because basal metabolic rate is more heat generation is more so skin has to be warm to get rid of the heat which is produced in the body but in case of hypothyroidism skin is usually cold then another important thing is that patient who are hyperthyroid because the body heat generation is more so they are intolerant to heat right they get very upset if they are especially in the summer or in warm places but when we talk about the hypothyroidism these patients are intolerant to cold because their basal metabolic rate in hypothyroidism is slow so they are unable to uh, you can say tolerate the cold environment right so again here the skin in hyperthyroidism skin is warm and sweaty and in case of hypothyroidism skin is thick skin is scaly and skin is yes and skin is dry and skin is thicker why because in hypothyroidism metabolism in the body is low and catabolism of the proteins is low so under the skin proteoglycans and many other like hyaluronic acid and glucuronic uh, hyaluronic acid or proteoglycans and glycosaminoglycans these substances accumulate under the skin in hypothyroidism and generalized skin become thick and with these substances water adsorbs and this condition is called mixed generalized mixed edema which is the feature of hypothyroidism and hypothyroidism due to accumulation of these substances under the eyes you may find puffiness right so their skin changes and another important thing in hypothyroidism hypo because generally metabolism are slow vitamin uh, carotenes can carotenes cannot be converted into vitamin a and carotenes which are yellow pigment they accumulate in the body and they produce yellowness in the skin but remember how do you differentiate hypercarotinemia with the jaundice hypercarotinemia is the feature of hypothyroidism again let me repeat it in a patient with hypothyroidism carotenes cannot be converted into vitamin a properly so carotenes levels go high in the blood and eventually into tissue and skin gives a yellow tinge skin gives a yellow tinge but very important point is you must differentiate this yellow coloration of the skin due to carotenes from the jaundice answer is very simple just look in the eyes of the patient right look on the sclera more truly speaking uh, sclera when there is truly there is jaundice sclera will also turn yellow but carotene does not turn the sclera yellow anyway let's come back okay very important point even the way patient talk you can tell on telephone if i if a patient call you and i say this patient has hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism any one of these conditions on telephone you can tell of course hyperthyroid patient will be having anxious voice shrill but hypothyroid patient has hoarseness of voice why the hoarseness of voice is there because in hypothyroid patient even on the vocal cords a lot of proteoglycans and other substances accumulate and make the vocal cord thick and due to that reason in hypothyroid thyroid patient when vocal cord become thick the voice also become thick and the face become toad like and uh, you can say that uh, they have hoarseness of voice and they cannot talk well right so this is about hypothyroidism then we of course come down please from the face okay there's a respiratory system you know hyperthyroidism metabolism is high in hypothyroidism metabolism is low so hyperthyroid patient need more oxygen and release more carbon dioxide hypothyroid need less oxygen and release less carbon dioxide it means respiratory function should be more in hyperthyroid and less in hypothyroid due to that reason you find usually patient with hyperthyroidism to keep neck but in uh, case of their respiratory rate and uh, depth of respiration may be more than normal but when we go to the hypothyroid 
their respiratory rate may be less than normal right then of course how well, let's go to git yes here is git beginning all of you know oral cavity now we have to see of course you know where it extends in the end i will not go into detail but right now we'll concentrate what are the effects of hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism on the git very simple hyperthyroidism will give increased activity in the git so git mortality in, will increase in hyperthyroidism when git mortality will increase at the top git secretions will increase but due to increased mortality transit time to the git is less and food right so digestion and absorption is not well and patient develop diarrhea usually patient who are hyperthyroid these patient have increased appetite they eat more but in spite of that they keep on losing the weight hyperthyroid patient keep on losing the weight because of simply burning their lipids and burning their proteins right that, that is a hyperthyroidism a hypercatabolic state so these people feel more uh, hungry they eat more but because g8 is hypermotile so they are unable to digest and absorb well so they develop the diarrhea and in spite of eating a lot they keep on losing the weight opposite to that when we talk about hypothyroid patient uh, yes the g8 is slow as i told you hyperthyroid patient have diarrhea you can anticipate that hypothyroid patient will have yes constipation is that right hypothyroid patient will have constipation right another thing which is very important is hypothyroid patients usually eat less but still they are having uh, weight gain the reason being that most of the protein turnover and carbohydrate turnover is slow in the patient with hypothyroidism is that right so we can say this patient again recap all what we have discussed hyperthyroid patient is anxious hypothyroid patient is depressed hyperthyroid patient is yes insomniac hypothyroid patient is sleeping a lot hyperthyroidism patient anxious voice hypothyroid patient <coughs> hoarseness of voice hyperthyroid patient warm flushed skin hypothyroid patient dry scaly cold skin hyperthyroid patient intolerance to heat hypothyroid patient intolerance to cold hyperthyroid patient if it is due to exosomal mass of course if it is due to sorry graves disease patient will have exosomal mass and lid lag right uh, opposite to that in case of hypothyroid patient there may be puffiness under the skin then as i told you that overall weight loss is there in hyperthyroidism and weight gain is there in hypothyroidism diarrhea is there in hyperthyroidism and constipation is there in hypothyroidism right uh, hyperventilation uh, is more respiratory system is overactive in hyperthyroidism respiratory system is underactive in hypothyroidism of course then we come to the cardiovascular system here in hyperthyroidism on the heart beta 1 receptors are more on s node beta 1 adrenergic receptors are more on av node beta 1 receptors are more uh, so what really happens or so adrenergic drive on the heart is more so heart rate goes up in hyperthyroidism hyperthyroid patient are tachycardic patient and the pulse rate is fast even sleeping pulse rate is fast right in uh, hyperthyroidism and cardiac output is more because there is positive chronotropic action as well as there is positive inotropic actions right so hyperthyroid patients usually have more than normal cardiac output one reason is heart is directly stimulated by adrenergic system number two reason is that body needs more cardiac output for its higher bmr right especially because tissues are <coughs> in hyperthyroid patient tissues are producing more carbon dioxide producing more lactic acid and ut utilizing more oxygen so tissue lead to arteriole dilatation because in hyperthyroid patient most of the arterioles in the body are dilated total peripheral resistance is less so heart is beating against less resistance so its cardiac output is further increased so we can say a patient with hyperthyroidism has hyperdynamic circulation patient with hyperthyroidism has hyperdynamic circulation opposite to that if you look at a patient with hypothyroidism his heart rate is slow contractility is slow cardiac output is less right so usually patient with hyperthyroidism develop tachyarrhythmias and patient with hypothyroidism develop bradyarrhythmias right another important thing which is very important patient with hyperthyroid may also undergo cardiac failure and here thing is common even patient with hypothyroid may also undergo 
cardiac failure because hyperthyroidism eventually produces cardiomyopathy in the same way hypothyroidism also produces cardiomyopathy. Secondly, hyperthyroidism may precipitate tachyarrhythmias and hypothyroidism may lead to bradyarrhythmias and sinus bradycardias and AV node blocks. So, all these things in hyperthyroidism there may be high output cardiac failure and in case of hypothyroidism there may be low output cardiac failure. After that we can come to yes something very very important that is in hyperthyroidism cholesterol LDL receptors on the liver are expressed more so cholesterol is more efficiently cleared from circulation but in hypothyroid patient in hypothyroid patient hepatocyte express less LDL receptors so from the blood cholesterol clearance is poor because cholesterol clearance is poor in hypothyroid patient what really happens that cholesterol level start going up in patient who are hypothyroid their cholesterol level or LDL level in the blood goes up and it has very important implication these patients have of course hypercholesterolemia which lead to accelerated atherosclerosis and many of these patients may have increased risk of ischemic heart disease or stroke or other atherosclerosis related problems right so we have discussed about the hair here the, here the thin in hyper here thick we have talked about the central nervous system talked about eyes we have talked about skin we have discussed about the GIT we have discussed about the respiratory system we have discussed about the cardiovascular system one important thing in uh, hyperthyroidism because cardiac output goes up in hyperthyroidism so systolic blood pressure goes up but in hyperthyroidism because arterioles dilate so total peripheral resistance is less and you know you know that uh, diastolic blood pressure depend on total peripheral resistance so when total peripheral resistance is less what really happens diastolic blood pressure become less so in hyperthyroid patients because cardiac output is more systolic blood pressure goes up and because total peripheral resistance is less diastolic blood pressure become less so systolic goes up diastolic become less so pulse pressure increases what i really mean that if a patient had blood pressure of 120 by 80 millimeter of mercury after hyperthyroidism patient may develop a blood pressure of 140 by 60 millimeter of mercury right mean arterial pressure may not change but systolic and diastolic pressures do change right and pulse pressure may increase now after that we come to another important aspect that is skeletal muscles right actually in hyperthyroidism as well as in hypothyroidism skeletal muscles become weak and patient develops fatigability right then another thing is related with the urogenital system yes right males and females both suffer in hyper and hypo both for example females who have hyperthyroidism right their hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis is disturbed right and that usually translates into oligomenorrhea their menstrual bleeding is less but in case of hypothyroid female again Hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis is disturbed, but this may translate into polymenorrhea or even menorrhagia, right? But one thing which is extremely important that hyperthyroid state or hypothyroid state both can lead to infertility, right? In the males as well as in the females, right? Then we can come to some other clinical features related with hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. 